Alright guys, welcome back to SQC Tutorials. In today's video, we'll be going straight to Integral Calculus and we'll be solving five questions on the first case, then we'll move over to the next case. I think there are about six or seven keys. And with that, we'll be done with Integral Calculus. Then we we'll talk about their, their applications. So let's, let's start, let's start. Do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't. Now, integration is the reverse of differentiation. So anytime you differentiate something, when you want to do the reverse, you're actually doing what we call integration. And why differentiation is the rate of change of one variable to another? Integration is all about the area of either a curve or a line or something. It's all about the area of the area under a certain curve or a straight line. So let's say you have a curve. And you're asked to look for the area under this side. In doing so, you, you are actually doing what we call integration. And on the x-axis, you have this point and this point. So this will now lead us to types of integration. We have two types of integration, which is definite and indefinite integrals. Definite and indefinite integrals. Now, for the definite integrals, you are actually looking for the actual area under that curve, given a certain region. These are the region, this point and this point. That means between this place and this place. It can be like this. And you'll be asked to look for the area under this part. The two regions you are considering on the x axis is this side. So because you are actually looking for the actual area here, it is called a definite integral. For definite integral, you can see question 5 here. You can see the two regions. A graph of 3x squared. Let's assume that the graph of 3x squared is like this. Let's assume, we are assuming it is like this. Or let's say it's like this. Let's use it this way. Let's say the graph of 3x squared is like this. And this is the point where x is 2. This is the point where x is 0. So you are actually looking for the area under the curve here. But for all this part that you are not looking for the actual area, your answer will be in terms of x. They are called indefinite integral. So the first case of integral calculus is, the, is integration in this format. Integration that has to do with this format, where x is just raised to a certain power. So when you have x raised to the power n and you are asked to integrate it, normally when you are differentiating, you bring down n and you subtract one from the power but in integration you are not you are not you are not multiplying by n you are actually dividing by n so you have x raised to the power n add one to the power then repeat the same thing at the denominator this is integration in differentiation you are dropping down the power but in integration you are dividing by that power but you must whatever you do to the power here that's what you do to it at the denominator then there must be a constant because when you differentiate a constant you get zero so in integrating any zero out or you get a constant back so do not forget this is very very important so let's do the first question question one we have integral of x raised to the power 4 dx as easy as that let's follow this formula here we add one to the power we have 4 plus 1 and divide by the result what is here is 4 plus 1. Do not divide by only 4. You must add 1 to that 4. So you have 4 plus 1. Then plus your constant. So we have x raised to the power 5 plus c over 5 plus c. That's the answer. As easy as ABC. Question 2. You are asked to integrate x cubed t raised to the power 4 dx. Now you can see dx here, it means what you are integrating is with respect to x, not t. If t was a function of x, they would have stated it. But in this case, t is not a function of x. So anytime you see this, just take this as a normal constant. What we are adding to, what we are adding 1 to, is actually the power of x, not t. So repeat it, write your t raised to power 4. Write your t raised to power 4 because it's a constant, so you just leave it there. Then x raised to power, add 1 to the power, then divide by the results. 
don't forget to add your constant 3 plus 1 is 4 so you have t raised to power 4 x raised to power 4 over 4 plus c now i can alter this question at the beginning, the question was the t not the x at the beginning it was like this integral of x cube t raised to power 4 dt at the beginning it was the t we would have been integrating with respect to t that means we are seeing x cube as a constant so you repeat the x cube but you are not adding one to the power of t plus c so x cube t raised to power 5 all over 5 plus c this would have been the answer let's move to question 3 Question 3, we are to integrate 4 over x cubed dx. 4 over x cubed dx. Now, when I take x cubed, now, first of all, the power of x is not 3. The power of x is not 3. The, um, the power of x is actually minus 3. Because one of the rules of indices is that when you have x raised to power m, it can be written as x raised to power minus m. When you have something in this form, you can write it as this. So the actual power of x here is actually minus m, not m. So the power of x here, this can be written as 4 x raised to power minus 3 because we took this upward. I didn't mean it was 4 over x raised to power minus 3. When you take it up, this negative goes out to become positive. But let's continue with this example. We have the x. And as usual, what you do, add 1 to the power and divide by your result. So you have... 4 x raised to the power minus 3 plus 1 all over minus 3 plus 1 then do not forget your constant minus 3 plus 1 is minus 2 so your final answer becomes 4 x raised to the power minus 2 all over minus 2 plus c 4 divided by minus 2 is minus 2 so your final answer becomes minus 2 x raised to the power minus 2 plus c now you can decide to leave your answer like this or you can decide to bring it back to this form by bringing the x raised to power minus 2 down. And when you do so, the minus sign goes out of it. So you can leave it as this. So it's either you leave it in this form or you leave it in this form. Whichever way, both of them are correct. Let's move to question 4. For question 4, we are asked to integrate... 1 over x squared plus x cubed plus root x, then dx. So first of all, the first thing I would advise you to do is to write them down in this form so that you know the powers of x. Now the power of x here is not 2, it is actually minus 2. So this can be written as x raised to the power minus 2 plus x cubed. Then what will be the power of x here? We've settled that in the WhatsApp class and in um, differentiation. This is x raised to the power 1 over 2. Rule of indices says that when you have square root of m, it can be written as m raised to the power 1 over 2. If there was n here, you will have n here. So we have brought everything to look like this form. So what do we do now? We start adding 1 to the power. Now let's start adding 1. You have x raised to the power minus 2 plus 1, divide by the results, plus x raised to the power 3 plus 1, 3 plus 1, plus x raised to the power half plus 1, all over half plus 1, then plus your constant. Minus 2 plus 1 is actually minus 1, so you have x raised to the power minus 1, all over minus 1. Now, because it's divided by minus 1, only you can just write the minus here plus x raised to the power 4 over 4, plus x raised to the power half plus 1 is 1 and a half, or 3 over 2, all over 3 over 2, plus c. So I can decide to take this back to this form. When I bring this down, this minus goes out. So I have 1 over x, plus x raised to the power 4, all over 4, plus... Now, this 3 over 2 is at the denominator. That means we have this divided by this. Remember, when you have A divided by, let's say, C over D, if you are changing this division sign to multiplication, the D will go up and the C will come down. So if it is like this, the D will go up and the C 
will come down. That's what we are going to do here. The two will go up and the three remains at the denominator. So this can be written as 2 over 3, x raised to the power 3 over 2 plus c. And that will be your final answer. But this x raised to the power 3 over 2 can be written as square root of x cubed. Whichever way, it all depends on the option you see. Now let's move to the last question for case 1 before we move to case 2. So question 5, we are told this is a definite integral because we are giving the limits now. 3x squared dx. Now as usual, add 1 to the power and divide by the result. So you have 3x squared plus 1 all over 2 plus 1. Then normally you add your constant, but once it's a definite integral, there is no use adding your constant. But let's add it. Let's add it. You see why there is no use adding it. Now, we want to impute these limits. We want to impute these limits. So you have 3x cubed over 3. So our final answer becomes x cubed plus c. There's a reason why I wrote this. We want to impute these values they give. Now, at x equals to 1, you put it there. 1 raised to the power 3 plus c. Then minus at x equals to 0. 0 cubed plus c. So we have 1 plus c minus 0 minus c. This c cancels out. So there's no need to actually add all the c's here. Your final answer becomes 1 unit square. The reason why I'm putting square in this unit is because we said integration is actually the area under a given curve or given lines. It can be more than one curve. It can be more than one curve. So it's one unit square. We have gotten that. Now let's, that will be all for case one. Let's move to case two. Let's move over to case two. Stay with me. All right. Welcome back to case two of integral calculus. So we are talking about in case two, we are going to deal with trig and exponential functions. But before then, let me just put some standards so that you know. Let me talk about a linear function. Now, any function that the power of x is 1 is a linear function. Let's consider this function. The power of x here is 1. The power of x here is 1. Same thing here. Same thing here. Same thing here. So those functions are called linear functions. When you plot a graph of f of x against this or y against this, you find out that it is a straight line. Suppose that the power of x here was 2. It would have been a quadratic function. So anytime you have a linear function, we are going to do something here. You see it. Now, when you differentiate sine, you are going to get cos. So it means that when you integrate cos, you are to get back your sine. So when I integrate, these are the standard. When I integrate cos f of x dx, I should get sine x. I should get sine x. But we are saying if f of x, if f of x is a linear function, that this is what our final answer will be. It will be sine f of x divided by f prime of x then plus your constant. Now, adding it was um, di um, differentiation we would have been multiplying by this, but it's not differentiation, it's integration. That's why we are dividing by this. The integral of if you differentiate um, cos, you will get minus sine. So it means that when you differentiate, integrate minus sine, you will get cos. When you integrate minus sine, you will get cos. Or when you integrate sine, you will get minus cos. So when you integrate sine f of x, where f of x is linear, it must be linear. You should get minus cos f of x divided by f prime of x. Now, when you differentiate tan x, you get sec square x. So it means that when you integrate sec square f of x dx, you should get back your tan f of x all over f prime of x, then plus your constant. Now, also, when you differentiate cot x, you will get um, minus cosec square x. So it means that when you now integrate cosec square x, you should get cot f of x all over f prime of x, then plus your constant. So then lastly, exponential. 
when you in when you differentiate exponential x you are supposed to get exponential back so it means that when you integrate exponential x you should get exponential x back then divided by f prime of x now all these things may not make sense to you now if you are with a pen there just take note of these things all these things may not make sense to you now until we start solving questions so let's start by solving this question the first question there is integrate integrate sine 3x plus 4 dx now the first thing you observe here is this is a linear function i didn't mean it was not linear we would have been using another technique we wouldn't have been using this formula we would have been using another technique now because this is linear when i integrate sine i'm supposed to get minus cos so i'll have minus cos repeat what is inside our function but when I differentiate 3x plus 4, I will get 3. So I will divide by that 3. As easy as that. That's the answer. As easy as that. When you integrate sine, you get minus cos. So repeat that function. Look at it here. Then divide by the differential of this function, which is 3. 2. You have integral of theory exponential. Sorry, 2. 2 cos. 1 over 2x plus 4 dx. Now, when I integrate cos, don't forget I'll get sine. So I'll repeat everything. Sine. What's inside the sine? A linear function. A linear function. Now, when I differentiate this linear function, if I differentiate 1 over 2x plus 4, I'll get 1 over 2. So I'll divide by 1 over 2 plus my constant. Now, because this 1 over 2 is at the denominator, I can flip it. The 2 goes up and the 1 remains so our final answer becomes 2 sine 1 over 2x plus 4 then plus your constant don't forget to always add your constant so settled let's move over to question 3 mind you f of x must be linear for you to use this formula if per eventually you are asked to integrate sine x squared plus 2x this is not a linear function. Don't do minus cos x squared plus 2x, then divide by the differential, which is 2x plus 2. You will be wrong. There's another technique to all this. So, but f of x must be linear before you use this, this um, shortcut. So, question 3, we have integral of 3 exponential 2x plus 4. Now, even if I divide everything by 5, it is still linear because I can split it and write 4 over 5, 2 over 5. The power of x there is still 1. But the moment I divide by a variable x, it is no longer linear. So, originally the question was in this form. It is a linear function. So, anytime I differentiate exponential, I will get exponential back. Mind you, this is a constant, so the constant remains there. So, we have 3 exponential 2x plus 4. Then, if I differentiate this function here, if I differentiate 2x plus 4, I will get 2. So, I divide by 2 plus c so this is our final answer 3 over 2 times exponential 2x plus 4 let's move over to question 4 question 4 integral of sec square this is the part you have to always remember you have to always remember this part over 3 now when you integrate sec square it is not just sec it is sec square um the function here I didn't mean it was sec, we would have been using another method, probably u substitution, which is our next case, or other, other methods of integration. But for this, it is just um, squared as here, sec square, this function. So when you integrate sec, you are supposed to get tan. So I'll repeat the same thing, all right? Tan 3x plus 4. Don't forget that there is a division of 3 here. So I'll write that first. But I'm also dividing by the differential of this function. When I differentiate this function, I will get 3. So I'm also dividing by another 3. This 3 that is here is actually the original theory that came from the question. Why this other 3 is what I got after differentiating 3x plus 4. So 3 times 3 is 9. Thank you. There's a plus C here already. So I can write this as 9. So this becomes our final answer. Now let's move to the last question. This is a this is uh indefinite uh a definite integral question. So it means that 
After getting a function of x, we impute these limits to get the final area under that curve. So the last question, the last question here is to integrate 0 pi over 4, from 0 to pi over 4, sine 2x dx. Now when you integrate sine, you will get minus cos. So you have minus cos 2x. I told you then if you differentiate 2x, you get 2. So I'll divide by that 2. I told you since it is a definite integral, there's no need to write the plus c because it will eventually go out of it. So we want to impute our limits. We want to impute our limits. Now when x is pi over 4, we have minus cos 2 times pi over 4 divided by 2. Then minus brackets, let me put it like this. We have another minus here, cos. When x is 0, we have 2 times 0, all over 2. So we have minus cos, pi divided by 2, this is pi over 2, all over 2. Minus times minus is plus, so we have plus cos, 0 over 2. What is pi over 2? Pi over 2 is actually um, 180 degree. And what is our cos 180 degree? That's cos 90, 90. So this is cos square 90, which is 0, minus 1. So our cos 180 is actually minus 1, but that minus 1 times minus becomes plus. So we have 1 over 2 plus. What is cos 0? Cos 0 is actually 1 over 2. So we have another 1 over 2. So everything becomes 1 unit. Ah, how come we had 1 unit again? 1 unit square. So that's for case 2. Let's move over to case 3. Stay with me.